We are currently on a backcountry fishing and bear hunting trip in central Montana. And there are bears in this area, which is good because we are bear hunting. But knowing that there are bears, we want to mitigate any negative encounters with bears. And so generally when I'm going on a trip, one of the first things I do is I check the land agency that I'm on and see what information they have on their website. So in this case, I went to the Helena Lewis and Clark National Forest webpage and I can see right away that there's a relatively new food storage order for this area. Uh, I also talked to the bear specialist, uh, Sarah Silty, and she told me that there are grizzly bears now in the area. So that's new information too to me and that, is, that changes things. You want to be a lot more careful knowing that there are grizzly bears in an area. Grizzly bears are generally more dangerous. Uh, black bears certainly can attack people, but grizzly bears are normally the problem childs when it comes to attacks on humans. So looking at the new food storage order, I can see that all attractants must be stored in a bear resistant manner. And so there's a number of things that qualify for a bear resistant manner. If you're away from camp, you gotta store it or if they're sleeping, you have to store it. So it also states that all attractants must not be buried or burned in an open fire. And I think this often gets overlooked. Uh, I often see people burning mountain house containers. Uh, that's not a good idea. Uh, a, it's still an attractant. There's still an odor to it. And B, that foil, while it looks like it's burning, it doesn't. It just kind of liquefies and then collects at the bottom of the fire pit. And over time, there's just this massive garbage at the bottom of a fire pit. In the food storage order, there's also a specific section for hunters, which definitely applies to us. If you kill something, you need to make sure that the carcass is at least 200 yards away from a trail or from a camp. Uh, and then once you have that carcass taken care of, basically you have the meat in game bags, uh, you need to then keep it properly stored and still have it at least 100 yards from a trail or from a camp. One of the main ways to avoid a negative encounter with a bear is to avoid areas that have bears. But if you're hunting bears, that kind of is counterintuitive. In fact, it's very counterintuitive. Another recommendation they also give is to make a lot of noise when you're out hiking to alert bears of your presence. Again, pretty counterproductive to hunting. But that doesn't mean that you have to completely ignore these recommendations. Uh, while I want to be in a general area that has bears, I don't want to camp right in the area that has bears. So if I'm seeing a lot of sign on the trail, if there's tracks, a bunch of poop, I'm not gonna camp there. I'm gonna like take a GPS coordinate and remember it, but I'm not gonna camp in that zone. I wanna, I wanna be at least a, a safe distance away. As far as making noise, yeah, generally when you're hunting, you wanna be quiet, but occasionally, if I'm in really thick cover and I know there's a bunch of grizzly bears in the area, I still just make noise because generally I'm not sneaky enough to kill anything when I'm walking through thick brush anyway, so might as well let out a bear whoop or uh, you know, hey bear every once in a while. Just, it's a case by case scenario. If there's a lot of grizzly bears in the area, I'll make noise. And especially once I have an animal dead on the ground, then I'm making a lot of noise. If I'm cutting something up, packing meat out, uh, all bets are off, start making noise. There's, also, there's other ways to also make sure you're avoiding camping in their areas uh, for the seasonal needs of bears. I mean, if you know they're keen in on food, certain food sources, don't camp in that area. So like, you know, in August, don't camp near white bark pine. They're probably munching on those or near a moth site or any of that. Also in the fall, if they're keen in on berries, you know, don't camp near those spots. So a little reminder, if you're not already aware of what you do when you run into a bear. So say you are gonna have a negative encounter with grizzly bears. If you have your bear spray, which you definitely should, if you're in grizzly bear country, you know, use that when it's close, obviously. Uh, or, you know, a pistol, you can use that too, but I find that I'm way more accurate with bear spray than a pistol. That being said, if you do have a negative encounter with a black bear, a lot of the times with black bears, they're coming after you in a predatory way, whether they're sick or who knows what's going on. You wanna fight at all costs with a black bear. You wanna punch it in the face, stab it, whatever, just beat it up, try to get it off of you. With a grizzly bear, that doesn't work. Uh, grizzly bears are trying to neutralize the threat, so they just want you dead or just stop moving. So stop moving. If you actually do get down on the ground and you can't spray it, can't shoot it, uh, you want to cover your neck and head, you know, get in your fetal position and just curl up and wait for it to kill you. Or maybe it'll go away, and that would be great if it goes away. It's definitely worked for some people, but don't run from any bear 
black bear or grizzly bear, that's a bad idea. Uh, you want to maintain, uh, maintain your ground, back away slowly. If it does attack, grizzly bear, go fetal position, cover your neck and head. Black bear, fight back. Either of those scenarios, if a bear gets within 25 feet at me and it's coming at me, I'm gonna spray it. So for backcountry hunts in bear areas, I always have a minimum of two things. And the first thing is bear spray. Uh, I always have bear spray and I always have it in a place that I can reach it, either on my chest or on my hip, somewhere that I can get it quick and uh, spray it. Because if it's on the back of your backpack or in your backpack, it does you absolutely no good. You're just packing extra weight at that point. There's no point to doing that. Most bear attacks happen very quickly. Occasionally, when I'm in a really high density grizzly bear area, I used to work in Yellowstone National Park, and uh, there we would carry two bear sprays or I would carry my 44 and a bear spray. Number two, I always have a long piece of parachute cord, and that's for storing my food in, bear, in a bear resistant manner. I hang it up in a tree, and the rules for the Forest Service is it needs to be at least 10 feet high and four feet away from any vertical support. Grizzlies don't normally climb trees, but a black bear will climb a tree and it can get to your food potentially. For uh, getting my bear hang in a tree, big hand of a medium sized rock, tie your paracord around that, underhand toss. Uh, I always get it on the first shot every time. I'm really good at the underhand toss, getting it over the branch now, so. Damn it! Son! Damn it. Wow, there we go. Stop it again. So I always try to have my cooking area a uh, safe distance away from my sleeping area. So where we cook and produce all these smells and I hang the food there is a safe distance away from the tents. Just to, if a bear does come in, chances are he's gonna smell that area first. So if you're sleeping, you probably wanna have your tents a safe distance away. If you're cooking fish over a fire, uh, try not to throw any of the fish parts into the fire because that's an attractant. So you want to throw that back into the creek downstream, far away from your camp, let all that smell drift out of there. Or if you cook your fish in foil, you don't want to put that foil in the fire. So I just try to wash the foil off in the stream um, and then pack that foil out and keep it stored in a bear resistant manner as well. If you want an extra layer of protection for either your food or around your tent, you can also carry a bear fence. Uh, this is a lightweight bear fence that we have. Um, it runs on two D-cell batteries. I think it's like around three or four pounds. Uh, so not crazy heavy, but it's an added layer of protection. It doesn't deliver a huge shock, but it's usually enough to deter a curious bear. If there's a high reward item inside that fence, it's not gonna deter a bear. If you have an elk quarter sitting right there, it's probably gonna walk through that, that electric fence. They do make a lot more powerful ones, uh, but not very friendly for uh, backpacking. So if you're car camping or if you got uh, stock horses or llamas, there's all sorts of different options of way higher power electric fence than this one, but this is the nice backpacking version. That's what I use for my setup, but there's a number of other items that you can use for storing your food in a bear resistant manner. Uh, there's coolers, if you're car camping, all sorts of different coolers. If you go to the IGBC website, it'll show you all of the certified grizzly bear proof or grizzly bear resistant coolers. And they are starting to come out with some uh, lighter weight options for backpacking. I haven't had a chance to get my hands on it, but there is this cool uh, sack. It's called the Year Sack, I think. There might be a couple other brands too, but it's like, I think it's a Kevlar or some very durable material sack and you tie it a knot in a certain way. And while a bear maybe could get in it, that counts for your storing your food in a bear resistant manner. Sarah informed me of various products that uh, will help you either deter bears or uh, satisfy your bear resistant food storage requirements. Uh, another item that she showed me was this thing called the Critter Getter. And it's this light flashing noise making device uh, that basically when an animal passes by, it's gonna trip the sensor and it'll start flashing lights and making a bunch of noise. And that usually deters the bear once they get the heck out of there. So those are a bunch of tools to mitigate uh, negative bear encounters if they happen. So I wanna thank the Forest Service and Sarah Silty who gave us some insight on this area. They let us know about the new food storage order and just told us uh, about the bears in this area. It's kind of cool to hear that there's grizzlies starting to move in here, but also at the same time, something that you should know about and keep in mind. But yeah, that's just some basic principles and ideas that we try to follow on backcountry hunting trips and 
staying safe in bear country. Thanks for watching.